for in the name of Jesus. Amen. We celebrate your holy name, God. Thank you for a new day to give you the glory. Mm. God, we are so excited to see what you are doing today in our life. Now, what I've got and uh, what is in our lives, this will be done, God. We submit ourselves into your hand. We submit this channel, God, into your hand. Mm. We submit our listeners, viewers, into your hands, God. Mm. In the name of Jesus. Mm. We speak blessings upon our well, viewers. We speak blessings in our lives, God, in the name of Jesus. Mm. Father, bless our families, mm. our friends. Mm. Father, we, we bless our supporters. Mm. Father, we bless everyone who is watching right now in the name of Jesus. Mm. We thank you, God, that you will be done. Mm. In Jesus' name I pray. Mm. Amen. Yeah, welcome. Welcome. This is Mucho Jambo Ministries YouTube channel. A place where we talk about everything God, faith. Our our desire is to see that we build our Christian faith together even as we journey on this earth until we see the Lord. And it's a pleasure to be here in your presence and to have fellowship with you in the presence of God. Yeah, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like and share. But before, before you share, share watch. Watch. <laughs> watch first and then share. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's for us to be partakers of the thing that we dish out. It's not just to dish the truth out, but you have no no entrance into the truth that you are dishing out. So be first the partaker, like the Bible says, the husband man is the first partaker of the of the of the vine or of the fruit before he gives to others. So let's be partakers of that which we give. Mm -hmm. So we're sending our greetings out to everyone who is listening watching from any part of the world we are asking that the lord would bless you and increase you and we pray that as you listen that it will also grow your faith in jesus christ Amen. yeah and so we send our greetings to our loved ones we send our greetings to pastor ezekiel and his family to noah and his noel. siblings oh, and noel as well. to pastor noel <laughs> to pastor eric to pastor mm. tony and to all the men of God that we know that stand with us in prayer and are there for us. We just, and even the ones that are not, we send, <laughs> we send our greetings to you all. We know that walking the vineyard of the Lord can be quite challenging. And we pray that the Lord himself will encourage and will strengthen you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> yeah, greetings as well to all my brother in Manha, yes. Uganda, and then Mr. Missy. Mm. And uh, Deoni from Nairobi. Mm. Usena Kaduna. Yeah. <laughs> Usena, <laughs> you're forgiving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very soon. Now we need you here. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, we look they forward want to, to hear your you. testimony. Yes. How yes. God from Islam. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, so be ready. Yes, I think when Usina visit, she's going to come and she's going to share that testimony. It's a mm. powerful, powerful testimony. Yeah. So look forward to hearing it. Mm, and also is going to teach. Not yeah, she's going to it, teach. Yeah. yeah, she's going to teach when she comes. Yeah. All right. Uh, greetings to... To Chosen, to Elijah. We're sending Mommy. our greetings our love. And to <laughs> Mommy Judith. And to Mommy Lego. And to mommy Kirundi. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Kirundi. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Please to all the mommies in our lives. <laughs> yeah. We appreciate you. We love you. You got you you you, you all have been amazing. Mm. Thank you. So we still continue uh, 
to prepare our facility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in a short while we'll be done with painting. I'm so excited for that. But <laughs> after painting, there's also cleanup, which I I pray to God that angels will come and do. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we still have a lot to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So keep us in your prayers. prayers yeah. And, uh, we're trusting God for beds, mm. beds, beds, beds. There are other things as well we're trusting, but as we take it one step after the other, mm. we are also carrying you along one step after the other. Mm. So the Lord has been faithful. <clears throat> Painting is almost completed. But inside the facility, mm. not outside the facility, we decided to make a pause on the outside part and finish up the inside first and just set up inside first. So inside the facility is almost completely done. Mm. and after that our next project is to put in beds mm. so if mm. you feel god is leading you to stand with us we're looking toward beds feel free to reach out and send your love donation whatever amount it is it's okay you don't need to take a whole project of the yeah. whole bed so even one complete you know bunk bed or a mattress or whatever whatever it is you want to give just give and the lord himself will bless you thank mm. you and also tables as well, chairs. Yeah, tables and chairs and mm. other things are needed. For mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so I have one question. Yeah. I think uh, not me alone who has this question, but I mean, the point I know it's your first time to hear this. I don't pray for myself what I mean. Mm. Because every time when I perform myself, the things that I need is no work out. Mm. The point I decide when I want to pray, I pray for other people. Mm. They say, God, you know my needs. This and this and that. You know everything. I believe with it. I don't know how. But to have that time to go before God mm -hmm. and they say that, God, you know, I need this and that, da, 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 fast, pray, this. No. That's why even if someone says that I can't put you in the kitchen because you'll finish everything today. <laughs> <laughs> but I told him because I came to realize that um the son in the house. Mm. So my father knows Provides, what I mean. yeah. So um, the book of Mark the uh, Mark chapter 11, 24 says that when I pray, God, we believe that God answered our prayer. And we received what we prayed for. But see, if you look, what the Bible is saying and in our life, you can even pray for something one year, but God is not answering. So my question is that, do you think God answer all the prayers you pray? Mm -hmm. Honestly, I personally don't think Wait, this thing is dicey. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to answer based on what everybody says. No, no. But I think no, no. Before you answer this, uh, for me, what I say is me. It's not you. Mm, it's mm. not someone. It's person. It's personal. Too. So first, we need to understand. Mm -hmm personal relationship with God. With God. It's always, different from general. Uh -huh. Always I say that, guys, we have the same God. 
we have the same Jesus if you believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have also different relationships with, with him. him. That's very true. That's very true. Hmm. And also the way we understand this verse is not the same. Because our experiences are different. Uh -huh. For me, if I came today, I ought to understand that I'm in the house. I have to behave like some mm. in the house. Mm. So I don't need to bother myself to cry to my father. You're the second person I'm hearing say something like this. They are, they are the same thing, but they said them in two version, two different two two ways, but it was it's still the same thing. Mm. This experience you're saying, and I know a man of God who says he never bothers. That God told him you are not a prayer request. God. You understand? No, seriously. And he says mm. it, he says it boldly without fear that he's not a prayer request so he should stop coming here requesting for needs so he doesn't ask god for needs he prays for other things when it is need god will meet it you know and now you're also saying the same thing you don't you don't pray for your needs because when you notice know, when you pray for your needs god doesn't answer you but when you pray for others you tell god you know my needs and God sorts out your needs without you requesting because you are his son in the house. And I realize that is the same thing. Because he too is a son in the house. Mm. He doesn't need to ask for his needs. God knows his needs. And that's the same thing you're saying. God knows your needs. So at the level of relationship that you both are, God knows your needs. Which is true. God knows all our needs. But now he has brought you both to a reality that he knows your needs and you don't need to ask him. So just carry on with what I'm asking you to do. Whatever you need, I will sort it out. You know? Now I'm coming to the point where you said that um, you said, does God answer all our prayers? I wanted to say, initially I wanted to say, no, God doesn't answer. And then a question came to my heart. Are there things that you've seen people ask of me or ask of God and it seems as if he didn't answer now, but somewhere along the line in the future, mm. he answers it. Yeah. And that was why I paused and I said, this thing is dicey. Because that was the question that popped up in my heart. And I think I want to answer from that point of that question. When I was younger, my mom used to tell us that he asked God for... Because my, my mom grew up With a step parent, and the experience was not funny. And so she used to pray to the Lord that the Lord would give her children that would become siblings to her. Mm. And she said she she when she was 18, she asked God that God would give her five kids. Three boys and two girls. And then she also asked God that God would give her daughters, husbands, that will love her like she is theirs. That was what she, I remember she used to tell us that. I've heard my mom say that thing more than two times. And then she said to me, and God gave her those children as she asked. The amount of children and the sex of the children, the way they should be, God gave to her. And when I got married, I was amazed to see the relationship between my husband and my mom. My husband is closer to my mom than I am, to be very honest. That's true. Yes. And one day, <laughs> one day, the thought came to my heart. Do you realize that God answered your mother's prayers completely? I don't know if she even realizes this part. I feel like shedding tears, honestly. Like one day she will tell us, she'll come me. <laughs> no, I, I don't really, I don't know whether she really realizes that this part also God answered that God would give her daughters, husbands, 
that to love her as though they, they are he, as if she is theirs. God answered that, the prayer of a child because of the pain the child was going through. God heard it completely. Did I say they didn't hear? But it is in the fruit you realize God heard. Mm. And I realize that sometimes the prayers we ask the Lord that we think he has not heard. But always remember that God said He makes all things beautiful in its time. Mm. A friend of mine pointed that thing to me. She just wrote it, you understand? And I realized it never said in God's time. It said in its time, meaning in the time of that thing, it will be made beautiful. When the time appointed has come, that thing will happen. Meaning you could be asking God for something, but it's not its time. It's not its time. Time and chance happens to them all. Meaning everything has an appointed time. So that he did not give you now does not mean he will not give you. Or he never heard your prayer. Or he never heard your prayer. The prayer might have been answered already. But there is a time appointed. The children of Israel were not going to leave Egypt or Babylon until the time appointed. For Egypt, they were to be there as slaves for 400 years. Appointed by the Lord. What is written by the mm. Lord. Mm. For Babylon, Egypt, um, Israel was not to leave Babylon until 70 years. Nothing they did, whatever would have happened. On the 70th year, it entered the heart of, of Daniel to begin to intercede. But until the time I appointed, there's nothing you can do about it. So you have to be patient. Patience is a fruit of the spirit. Forget all these things that you hear people whose names are patient and they are changing it to favor. As if patience is a bad thing. It's a fruit of the spirit. <laughs> no, what came my mind now? People are so happy to name their children name from the Bible. Mm. But they are not interested to teach them the Bible. The Bible. No, it's true. It's very true. <laughs> it's very true. I've seen people that bear the name patience, especially when they want to get married and they see the husband is not coming. They think it's their name that is their problem. So they go and change it to people. And I'm like, if you know what patience means, this is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Can a fruit of the Holy Spirit be bad? No. Time and chance happens to them all. Everything has its time and its chance. Everything. So that God has not answered does not mean that he has not heard. It's just that it might not be the time. Or what you are asking for. God might want to give you what you are asking for, but not in the way you expect to have it. Let me take a very common example because it's an example that when you paint, everybody will say, oh, they understand. The issue of marriage. A particular girl wants to marry a particular man. Or a particular man wants to marry a particular woman. Mm. And they are praying to God. You understand? Regarding it. And they've seen the person, they like the person. Along the line, God now tells them, let go of that relationship. And it's like, oh, ah, you understand? It looks like what Nigerians would call bad market. Like, <laughs> you know, this was not a favorable thing. 
And God is telling you, let go, let go, let go. And it looks like ah, time is going. When will I get married? You say, get, let go of this relationship. I let go. Let go of that. Now, this final one that I've met, you say, let go still. Let's say the person lets go. Five years down the line, nothing happens. You know, the tendency to think, maybe I did not hear right. Is there. Six years down the line, nothing happens. Maybe on the eighth year is when you will meet the one appointed. For the purpose that God has set. The purpose is not you. The purpose is found in God. It's him that is the writer of the script. Mm. I was saying something to my husband yesterday. And after saying that, that became a meditation in my heart for, for some time. Yesterday when I was telling you that um, no one knows what happens tomorrow. So you cannot, you can be careful what you do today. You know, because of, you don't know what will happen tomorrow. You don't know whether the things you have, a wise child will inherit it or a foolish child will, you know, inherit it. You don't know what tomorrow holds. And then as I was thinking about this thing later, what came to my mind was, don't judge a person or a thing by what you see on the now. Because tomorrow does not belong to you. Tomorrow belongs to God. You know, and there's one thing that I think we all need to disabuse our minds from. Hey, God forbid, not my children. God forbid, not my <laughs> this. God forbid, not my that. Mm. Anything that will happen in tomorrow is not happening based on your God forbid. It's happening based on what has been written. If God has written it down, mm, whether you shout, to God whether you shout or, or, or you <laughs> say, or, or you do what, or, you according to what life. has been written, is what mm. is playing out tomorrow. So if what has been written is that Israel will serve Egypt for 400 years, there's no prayer Abraham prays that will mm. change it. Why? Because what is written is serving the plans and the purpose of God. Which means there is no prayer can change God is way. No. When God said Hezekiah will die, Hezekiah went and prayed and prayed and prayed. God said, okay, you will still die. I will add you 15 years. That 15 years, if you see what happened within that 15 years, you will wish Hezekiah died when God said Hezekiah will die. <laughs> Honestly. That was when the Bab king of Babylon came to visit mm. him and he showed him everything in the kingdom. And then the prophet came and said, oh, did this man come to visit you? He said, yes. Say, what did you show him? I showed him everything. You showed him everything. He said, in a short time, he will come and take over everything. But this thing you have done, judgment came. And said, okay, thank God, it's not going to happen in my days. It's not going to happen in the days of my children. I asked, what kind of father is this? And then when he fell sick, this was a man that was written off, that he trusted God more than everything that had been in Israel, including David. Mm. His guy's trust for God was more than that of David's. Can you imagine that? But in the end, what happened? When he fell sick, he said, I'm looking for suitsayers. And God said, because you've done this, you couldn't even come to me to find out. You understand? God pronounced the judgment on him. So you ask yourself, he would have died a peaceful king, and they would say, mm. like it was in the days of Hezekiah. Why this kind of rubbish end for extra 15 years? Mess up. Mess up! So anything that happens tomorrow is not based on what you planned today. It's based on what, it's, what is written. So if God has written that your children will serve a particular people for a specific amount of time, can't change you it. can't change it. Store up all the storage you can say. You can store. The way it will go down, when they tell you in your grave, you will not believe it. You understand? So, why did I bring up this story? Time and chance happens to them all. Anything that God will do is based on what is written. Mm. It has been written that the Messiah will come. Even if Israel cries for the Messiah from now to next day, Messiah will not come until the season appointed because the Messiah will come in a time when crucifixion is the way to punish offense. Mm -hmm. And the only people that will do that are the Romans. So until the season where the Romans begin to conquer the, the world, 
comes, Messiah is not coming. The moment you see Rome begin to rise, the Messiah is close. Mm -hmm. So you see the way things work. So when we pray for things, if God has not answered it yet, does not mean God has not heard. But there is a time and a season appointed. And until that time and season appointed comes, nothing will be done. So when the thing now finally is answered in the time and season, you remember when you pray that you say, wow, God is faithful. But God is not a remote control button that you control at will. Give me fish, he gives you immediately. Give me this, he gives you immediately. The day somebody annoys you, kill that person. And you expect him to kill the person. So truly, when God says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. He means it. But there's another part. If you ask anything in accordance to God's will. It's just mm -hmm. like we've been talking about the writing. Mm -hmm. So how? Here now I have another question. Mm hmm so, how am I going to know that God is well? It's not easy for me to know the will of God, which means the prayer has been a prayer. You are not sure whether it is God's will or So, I God's was praying will. my will. So, how? Okay. Um, Holy Spirit, how do we answer this? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Um... <laughs> Maybe uh, my will was to get this money and go enjoy some life. Yeah. Or... The Bible talks about knowing God's um, good, mm -hmm. acceptable, and perfect mm -hmm. will. Mm -hmm. You just say, how do I know the will of God? Mm -hmm. The Bible also says, ask and it will be given. <laughs> if anyone lacks wisdom, you should ask the Father who is willing to give it. Freely, without looking down on you. Meaning you can know God's will by asking him his will. Jesus said in his prayer, let your will be done on the earth as it is in the heaven. But where the challenge is, is not asking God and God telling you his will. It's when he tells you his will, are you willing to accept it? And God, that's why he refused to pray for him. <laughs> 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 Are you willing to accept the will of God? Let's take the story of Abraham that we no, talk about yesterday. again. Yeah. God says to Abraham, your children will serve as slaves for 400 years. It is a servant, slaves. If you know what is slavery, you will not, it's not a funny thing. Just watch Kunta Kinte of Roots and you have an idea of slavery. And mind you, the slavery of those days was even worse. Mm. So God says to him, your children will be slaves. Just know this for sure. When he was like, God give me a chance, God give me a chance, God give me a chance. God said, okay. For you to know that I'm serious on the business of giving you a child, set before me a sacrifice and I will pass through it. And then he sets before him and he falls into a deep sleep and God passes through the sacrifice and God says to him, Know this for sure. Your descendants, they will be taken to slavery. Mm. 400 years. And he said, with a mighty arm, I will bring them out. Mm. If you were Abraham, with all the storage of wealth that we store these days for our children mm. in the Swiss bank, if you were Abraham, you say yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's a food for thought. If God comes and tells you, I will bless your children. Amen. I will do the this. Amen. I will do the that. Amen. But your children are going to be servants. Ten generations. They will be people's servants. They always say, God forbid, this is no God. This is... You, you understand? The enemy. <laughs> the voice of the, the, the voice of the devil. Yeah. Why is it my descendants that will be seven? My children shall be on top and not beneath. Uh -huh. be that. That. You understand? Not. <laughs> it's nice. 
being the head is nice. But take it if your children are going to be like David and um, um, Joseph, who is going to be prime minister of Egypt. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. But your children will be sold to slavery before they become prime minister of Egypt. For days, you'll be thinking about how that process is going to happen. Mm. So you see the dynamics in these things. When we ask according to God's will, meaning if what you are asking is in line with what God has written, mm. you will get it. But time and chance must happen to it. But also to, if I add, the, let me add this to what you're saying. The reason we don't know the will of God is because we go before him to inform him. Not to hear from him. Yeah. Mm. It's easy for me to go before him because I planned my business mm. from the very beginning. And uh, I got the money. The business is already set there somewhere. And then it, by Monday, I will start time you know, and I mm. go before God and I pray. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my business. The Bible says that, blah, 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 blah. it was far, oh, mm. blah, blah, blah. it's my portion, this and that, mm. blessings mm. run after mm. me, stuff mm. in the mm. name of Jesus, amen. Nobody prays the negative for themselves. Uh -huh. They always pray the But positive. even before you get capital of your business, mm. you never go before him, God, where can I get this money to start a business? What kind of business should I yeah. even do? Where should I be looking? Uh -huh. What should I? Mm -hmm. So always I say, guys, you have to die in your mind. Here to die. Before you go, before, uh, before you go to pray, make sure your mind is clean. Your mind is clean and you're ready to receive the will of God. Hmm. Maybe you are thinking to go to town down to start your business, but God is, wants you in community. Community to start your business. Or in bush bush somewhere. Yeah. So when you still have your imagination, your thought, your plans, your mind, I'm telling you to hear God's voice is not his because enemy will. We'll speak. We come using your your thought, your imagination, this and that. And they paint a picture where you see even how a customer they are going to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have already seen the end before you began. <laughs> After, when I see your business going down. You start fighting the devil. You say, God, why you allow me? To start this business. <laughs> Why? God, because the one at fault. <laughs> for not telling you that this business is error. <laughs> you know, there's another part of this thing too that, that, that just came to my mind as you were talking. Well, Don't think what we are saying is God's will is only when it is negative. Mm -mm. No. God's will can also be that you get the job, you are able to get the house, mm. you do well, you get married, you have kids, they go, they become good things. Could also be God's will for you. But this is the point we are trying to drive at. Let me take Jesus, for example. How many of us, if God showed us what is written for our life, is that we are supposed to come, be accused, slain, and die? Let's Keep Jesus on one side. Who's here? And that's Jesus. Stephen had a similar experience. Mm. Stephen was to be stoned. He didn't achieve anything that anybody would say he achieved. And one would say, So what is the point? But whether it's in our high estate or our low estate, whatever is the will of God always end up revealing the glory of. Mm. The glory of God in ways that man's mouth is zipped. I will take the life of Stephen again. 
Stephen was to be stoned and Saul and his men will feel they've silenced mm. him. And his brother will wonder, for instance, I didn't know if he wondered it, but I'm just uh, assuming. I'm just, I'm just painting the picture. His brother may wonder, what did we follow? We've not even started and they've killed mm. my brother. He left his fishing business mm. only to be stoned. But his brother may not wonder that also. Mm. Because Stephen revealed something that none of the people standing there had ever heard. Mm. Christ was alive. Because what they said was his disciples came to steal his body. Mm. But Stephen said, I see him standing. Mm. And Stephen called God Father. Mm. Stephen mm. revealed things that would leave the people's mind forever wondering. Mm. From that experience was what birthed the encounter of Saul. Mm. Stephen's name will go down in a book forever. That will be mentioned everywhere in the world. People will begin to name their children after Stephen. Mm. The honor and the glory transcended the natural, transcended his day. Till tomorrow, until Jesus comes, Stephen's name will always be mentioned. If he sold the largest amount of fish as a fisherman, after he dies and his children die, nobody will remember him. Mm. That is to say, his children will be the one trying to keep his memory alive. But after they go, that's the end. How many people were fishermen in the days of Stephen? Or whatever business it was that he was doing. How many people did the same business with Stephen? Sold beside his shop mm. that we hear today. That we even know of their descendants. And we can say it's tied to this man who was a great mm. man. Whatever it is, whether it's in your higher state or in your lower state, that is God's written will for your life, will always reveal the glory. Always reveal the glory. Always. And it's not a glory mm. that you put. It's a glory that God adds. Nobody can take it away, not even the devil. So that's what we are trying to talk about. Don't think, okay, I must be poor so that I can be in the will of God. That's a lie from the devil. Or I must be rich for me to reveal the glory of God is a lie from the devil. <laughs> the only thing that reveals God's glory is what he has written. Mm. Is what he has written. The will of God. The will of God. And that is why he said, I will bring them out with a strong hand. Mm. And when he brought them out, even Pharaoh knew this is not ordinary. Till today, people are still talking about it. Mm. Crossing the Red Sea. <laughs> <laughs> it was a dread to the nations. Generations mm. after, they are still talking about the God of Israel. Yeah. That is the glory. He allowed them to be slaves because he wanted to reveal his glory. He asked Jesus, so why did this man, was this man born blind? Was he the mother that sinned or the father that sinned? And Jesus said, no, nobody sinned. Mm. It was so that God would reveal his glory. Mm. Because after the man is a grown man, Christ will come and open his eyes and everybody will see the power of mm. God. That story will never leave Israel. Today, we are in Nigeria, we are talking about it. Mm. About blind Bartimaeus. Whatever God does must reveal his glory. So, are you willing for God to reveal his glory through your life? He said the creation is waiting to see the manifestation of the sons of God. How do we manifest? Mm. Except we give God right of way. How do we give him right of way? When we are willing to allow his will. Do you think the will of God is this? Most times it's not. 
think we can talk about the will of God tomorrow. Okay. Only the will of God. Honestly, that's the reason why the Bible says it is him that gives us the power to will and go to <laughs> according to his pleasure. It's not easy to be willing to God's will. <laughs> it takes God to help you be willing. So even if you think your willingness has gotten to a level where it is now easy, it is how far mm. it has helped you. That's why the Bible says that without Jesus, I can do nothing. I can do nothing. <laughs> Oh God, I'm in the will of God. That's a topic for another day. <laughs> yeah, no. I see and also people see that Ste- Stephen mm. was in God's plan so that... He will die. No, no, yeah, so that... Uh, oh, Paul. Paul we know Jesus. Exactly. So you see, Paul will not have an encounter except he first of all persecute and persecute mm. Stephen. That will give him the morale to want to go and do more. Mm. But Jesus is waiting. But mm. Stephen has to be the lamb mm. slain for that. For that encounter. And also sometimes God refuses to answer our prayers because our desire. Mm. You know that. There is always one song. I want the cast, I can show my nipple. Ah, that's exactly <laughs> the that's exactly the song I want to For really? <laughs> This I this song the <laughs> the person from Kenya. He says that I pray for my enemy so that they can live long. And once God prays, I show them. Can like, just to boast yourself, say you say I will never have this in my room. No, this is my God. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm sure God will never ask <laughs> that prayer because He says that love your enemy. You need for now. Hmm. <laughs> you know the body thing. God, kill my enemy. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 my friend. There's someone who asked me. Oh, for, God. There's someone who asked me, please pray for this person. And they, like, uh, four people. I want them to die. And you, you want to leave. Why don't you die and let them they leave? They say, pray for me. Finish them. I say, me, I'm not. Are you, are, you, are you a juju man? No, I say, no. <laughs> are you a juju man that will try yeah, to put around like you spin? The witch doctor, they must die. And that's the by uh, what the Bible the witch says. must die, but not not just anybody that annoyed you. I says that the witch doctor also they need Jesus. Exactly. <laughs> what we need to do here is to pray for them. Yeah. Because if you remember before you received Jesus, also you are bad person. Yeah, bad person too. Because the Bible says that if you commit one sin, also you are killed. Imagine how although, many people you have killed in your mind. You know, although there are some people that will tell you that some people have to die so that things will hmm? <laughs> happen. Which, in a wish, uh, when the sinner don't want to repent, there's nothing anybody can do, he will eventually go. But, in the hand of God. <laughs> no, but seriously, love your enemies, Jesus say. The Bible, Jesus said, it is written that an eye for an eye and a tooth for a, for a tooth. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who despisefully use you and persecute. and persecute you. That's why Stephen never say, God, release fire. Or judge them or let them not die a good say, death. I say like Jesus, mm. please forgive them. You don't know what they <laughs> you know, this, there's another thing we are talking, going to talk about too. Maybe after the will of God, being the lamb and being the lion. Because I heard people say, it's not all the time that we Christians need to be lamb, lamb, lamb. Sometimes we need to be tight, lion. I want to say tiger. 
Sometimes we need to release fire. Sometimes we need to release fire to remove the hair on someone's head so that you can see clearly. I think, I think we so now we send the combat. So now we love that one. <laughs> release <it> fire. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh God, I'm Yeah. Oh God. And so before mm-hmm. we, we we go, before we finish, mm-hmm. what can you tell people? Let's now. Someone who is thinking that God is never here, his prayer is never, never answer his mm, i know that feeling sometimes god is quiet because he needs you to go through it it's not that he has never heard you or that he is not hearing you but like israel who was in egypt for 400 years no matter the prayer that the israelites prayed god will not show up In fact, that whole 400 years, they had forgotten about the God of Israel. Mm. Why would they forget about the God of Israel? Except that they kept praying and he was not here in their minds. And so they decided to learn the ways of their masters. Oh, you think there was not some of them that had juju? They were born in Egypt, raised in Egypt. They've forgotten about the God of Israel. Which God do you think they will, they will have? But when the time appointed came, God did not need them to pray. God himself stirred up events. God began nudging Moses. Mm. in directions that he began to feel something is not right something is not right his discomfort led him to take actions that caused them to to, to take actions towards him that made him run away <clears throat> in running away he encountered god because it was time mm. so when it is time whether you do or don't do you will just find out that things are beginning to just you wonder what is going on here i'm not even praying i'm not even doing this i'm not even doing that so don't give up it can be quite lonely when you pray and it seems god is never answering you but if you check you will always see pointers to telling you that god is still with you one person might come up and just say one encouraging thing to you somewhere after a while one person will just, one thing will just happen. One thing will just, but what the enemy tries to make us do is only look at the things that are not, so that we can lose our heart. That's why the Bible says, be thankful always. Mm. Whether it is good or it is not so good, always give thanks. Because I one of the things I've experienced is once my heart is in a state of gratitude, mm. even when God has not answered what I'm asking, I have faith. Because suddenly I begin, I begin to see what he has done before. And I have hope. And even if he doesn't do it, my love for him that is being propelled not by what I'm asking, to a point that even when I am feeling weak because of what I'm asking, he's not responding. I'm able to carry the weakness and tell him. But truly, 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 there is a season where you feel like God is really not hearing and your heart feels discouraged. There's truly that time. But there is one thing I used to say back then when I was going through a process and I felt like I'm dying. I said, God, even if I cannot pray, pray for me. I'm being honest. And before I know it, it's like God really prays for me. I tell him, I say, God, as you see me now, I can't even pray. I don't even have a word on my lips. But I'm asking you to just pray for me. Let your prayer. I used to tell God, I said, let your faith be enough for two months. Mm. That's what I used to say to God. God, let your own faith 
be enough for two of us because I don't have. God, let your prayer be enough for two of us. Pray for me. I can't pray right now. And I saw that at the moment when I felt like I would fall into the deepest tunnel, suddenly I'm up again. Nobody knew the battles I was going through. Only me and God. So if you feel like in that place that God is not hearing you, you're praying, 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 he's not answering. If you have opportunity to listen to this, let mm. this be God's answer to you that I am still with you. You see, but nobody ever encourages me. Nobody, this one that you're listening to is the answer. I am still with you. Mm. But just allow time and chance happen. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you too. Uh, pray for us. Okay, let's pray. I Heavenly Father, we thank you because you're the God of all comforts. And you bring your word to be to give us comfort and encouragement. Just like you said, all scripture, all scripture is made for edification, for rebuke, for exhortation. Today, this one has come for comfort. Because we ask that you will comfort your children. That by understanding, by the spirit of understanding, you will give encouragement to the hearts of men. You said, your word says that you give strength to the weak and to those who have no might. You, no, no, to those who have no strength, you increase might. And you know, those who have no might, you increase power. Lord, we are asking that you will increase their strength. You will give strength to the weak. You will give them strength from the inner man, Holy Spirit. And you will strengthen them with might in the inner man through your Holy Spirit. So that we can be refueled to run the race. This is what we ask, even as we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah.